Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So today we're gonna to talk about a tool, like a concrete, really put it to good use immediately if you want to kind of tool. It's called the God Jar. You could also call it a God Box. You could also call it a Worry Box or a Surrender Box. So just a little aside, in Brightline Eating, we take care to be faith neutral, meaning you can find your home in Brightline Eating and find language that you relate to in various ways in our various, you know, uh, little niche communities. If you have a religion that you follow, if you are spiritual but not religious, or if you're atheist or agnostic, all are welcome here in Brightline Eating. So what I'm gonna do in this vlog is I'm gonna language this tool the way I use it, and then I'll do my best to also propose uh, an alternative framing of basically the same tool for someone who wants to come at it from a different perspective, right? In relation to the way you conceive of faith or no faith in your life. So um, I call it a God jar because I believe in God. Um, although uh, I tend to use the word God more like as a, you know, kind of the word for it in English, but you know, not something that I feel like I understand very thoroughly, way beyond my pay grade. But anyway, the great mystery, the unknowable essence, the sort of um, source and connection point for my deep intuition, however you want to language it. This totally works also if you're religious. It totally works if you just want to do a secular version of it and just write letters um, out to, to nothing or just to your own sort of self or to a friend or an ancestor who passed that you have, you know, fond memories of. But I just want to show you here. Here's um, actually one of my God boxes. Um, a friend of mine made this. Uh, she's in 12-step recovery and she's an amazing woodworker. The, um, the crafts womanship of this box is incredible and there's a little um peace dove coin in the top so i've got letters in here 8 13 20 going back march 7th 2016 i've got like a lot of letters in this box. So, and I have no idea if the um, focus stayed true through all of that. So if we're just now coming back into focus, I apologize for my autofocus camera over there. There's no one operating focus for me right now. So where do those letters come from? What do they mean? Um, why did I write them? In each and every instance, those letters were written at a point in my life where I felt like my back was against the wall and I was just um, at my wit's end with some kind of situation that felt so hard, so tangled, so unmanageable, so scary, so uh, not what I wished it were that I felt called to just get it out on paper and turn it over, meaning to just kind of like with the same energy that a little kid brings a broken toy or a tangled necklace or something like that, or a jar that won't open to a parent and just says, <laughs> here, would you fix this, handle this, untangle this for me? I can't, I, I know my capacity and I can't. With that kind of surrender energy, that kind of trust energy, that kind of, um, this will likely go better if I just turn it over, like out of my, just I'm done, right, energy. Here's the other one. I have two God boxes at the moment. This one I made actually at San Jose City College in, ceramics class i made this see how it's got like the little hash marks there so you know how the lid lines up which is kind of cool and similarly in this one 
there are a lot of letters, a lot of letters going back to November 16th, 2006. So I've got letters going back to 2006. Here's what I find in my experience using this tool and what I've done. Um, I have never written letters for said worry box, surrender box, God box on schedule or with a particular frequency or sort of as a should ever. I write letters when I, when I feel like I must because a circumstance is feeling that um, charged for me and I just really want to turn it over. So that's the first thing is um, those letters all just came, you know, so I might go a whole year, I guess. I mean, I haven't really looked to see, is there a year where I didn't write a single letter? I bet there is. And then there are some months where I'm guessing I might have written four letters or something like that, or five or six. There is no particular rhyme or reason to it. It really just has to do with when I find myself called to write a letter, I write it out. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that there is, for me, a tremendous sense of perceived relief when I write the letter and then fold it up, put the date on the outside, and then just put it in there. There's something about the physical um, symbol of putting it in the box and closing the lid and then stepping back. That is tremendously grounding for me and freeing and calming and relieving. And then the third thing, and this is actually my favorite part of it by far, like by far, once in a blue moon, once every couple years, I'll start to, I'll open the box and read old letters. And then I get this magical gift of being reminded of the sine wave of life. In Reboot Resume, we talk about the sine wave, right? The ups and downs of life, unavoidable ups and downs. And I get to witness how what at the time feel like absolutely intractable, insolvable problems have all been resolved. To the one, just resolved. Solved, 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 solved. And then because my spirituality is where I feel like I'm sort of in some dance with some mysterious energy that I don't really understand. I take that as a moment to say thank you, right? That I actually am being cared for and it actually is all unfolding just fine. You know, the sort of secular version of that would just be sort of maybe more, you know, the stoic philosopher version of like, it all passes, right? It all passes this too shall pass. But it's really neat to actually have the record of the things that felt the hardest by definition and like all in one place and then just to read through those letters and go, oh yeah, I was upset about that. <laughs> and like, yeah, so not thinking about that anymore. Yeah. So how does this relate to your Bright Line eating journey? Well, um, I'll tell you, I got a lot of things in there about food for sure. You know, there've been moments where my relationship with food felt like the thing that was feeling most unmanageable and desperate and out of my control. And then there's, of course, times like now where, geez, that's not, that's not a problem. That's not an issue in my life anymore. And then there's also this way in which when the food is neutral, when the food is put in its place, Typically, relationships become the thing that feels charged. Relationships with family, with loved ones, with friends, with partners, with kids, with parents, and on and on. And this is where a lot of us, I'll just speak for myself here, I come face to face with ways of human relating that, um, how would I put this lovingly toward myself, that I need to up-level, right? Um, and ways that my sort of codependency or caretaking or expectations or criticisms or demands or whatever, um, 
they're not working in my relationships. And so when my relationships come to a head and then I write it out, it's really beautiful to see over time the relationships start to soften and change as well. So the writing of the letter is usually a really interesting experience as well. And just reading over time the way I've languaged these letters and so forth. So, um, you know, in Bright Line Eating, we talk about um, a physical transformation, an emotional transformation, mental transformation, and spiritual transformation, right? We evolve and transform on every level through engaging with this Bright Line Eating program and working a program the way each of us uniquely do. So I just wanted to offer this tool because it's meant so much to me on my recovery journey, so, so much. And um, yeah, take it or leave it, like everything that we do here in Bright Line Eating. Some of the tools that are available here will feel like a fit and some of them won't, and that's totally fine. But I just wanted to offer the God box, the surrender box, the willingness box, the worry box. Um, some people use a mason jar, so the God jar. Um, you can find cool things on Etsy or make them or, you know, go to a quaint little shop and buy some sort of container. Really anything will do. And um, yeah, maybe post in the comments if you've ever used something like that yourself. I found it to be really valuable. And that's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.